Now, when we think about enzymatic reactions, there's actually a, a series of different ways that, that molecules can react in interacting with an enzyme. We can have, for example, a reaction that's a single substrate reaction and a single product. A is converted into B. We can have a reaction in which a single substrate is converted into multiple products. So, for example, if I took A and I split it into two molecules, I would make B and C. I could take multiple substrates and make single products, which is the opposite, which would mean I would be putting two things together to make a third, uh, that third being C as shown here. And last, I could have multiple substrates and multiple products in which A and B are converted into two different things, C and D. Now, uh, enzymes are, as I said, magical in their ability to catalyze reactions, and they are so much faster than a chemical catalyst that it's important to think about the ways in which they're able to accomplish what they accomplish. And so this illustration of an enzymatic reaction goes step by step into some of the considerations for the ways that enzymes accomplish what they do. Chemical catalysts, I want you to remember, are things that are very fixed. A platinum catalyst, for example, has no breathing. It has no movement to it. It simply is a surface on which something can happen. And enzymes are fundamentally different from that. In this illustration, we see an enzyme shown in green, and we see the active site of the enzyme, that is the place where the reaction is catalyzed, shown in light green. Now, the enzyme in this reaction I'm showing you is a reaction of multiple substrates, multiple products. So we will have A and B, as you can see here, that will be converted into two other molecules. We start with the enzyme unloaded. No products, uh, contain, no products on the enzyme and, of course, no substrates. The substrates are the molecules that bind to the enzyme and they will bind so as to position, be positioned at the place where the reaction occurs, the active site. We can see here their substrates have started to bind to the enzyme. We see the enzyme again in green. We see substrate A that has bound the top portion of the enzyme and substrate B that has bound the bottom. Now the interaction of the substrates with the enzyme will actually cause the enzyme to start to change. This is the Koshland induced fit model of an enzyme. In the Koshland induced fit, it says that not only does the enzyme change the substrates into products, but transiently, during the catalytic process, the substrates change the enzyme. And as we will see, that's essential for this reaction to occur. So the substrate binding has happened. We have formed at this point what we call the ES complex, enzyme substrate complex. Now, in the next step you see right here, what has happened is we see the reaction going on. And the enzyme has actually changed its shape slightly from the initial binding to bring A and B into closer proximity. Well, of course, for a chemical reaction, closeness is an absolutely uh, essential or requirement for the reaction to occur. So the slight change in the shape of the enzyme has converted A and B from being apart to being slightly closer together. These changes of shape can be very large on enzyme terms, or it can be very, very subtle, but nonetheless, the change happens with every reaction. Now, the reaction is occurring again, as we can see, because they have been brought into close proximity. At this point, as the reaction is going on, we have something called the ES star complex. And we can just simply think about this as the place where the reaction is now able to occur. As we look at this uh, reaction closer, we see during the reaction, a part of A has moved from A to B. And this has been a transfer of a part of one substrate to another. A is no longer A, and B is no longer B at this point. We have made what we call the EP complex. We've made the products, but we haven't released the products yet. So A has become C, and B has become D. Now, the products are still contained within the enzyme. But the products are different than A and B were. So just as A and B caused the enzyme to change shape, so too will C and D cause the enzyme to change shape. And you can probably see where this is headed. The enzyme's going to go back to where it was. And that's what happens right here. We see in this reaction now that the enzyme has been changed and it's changed back to its initial state. In the initial state, we can think of its fingers being open like my hand is open, and C and D are ready to go flying away. The enzyme now being back in its original state is able to go and bind more substrate. It's ready for the next process. Now, if we think about this, our definition of a catalyst that everybody learns in freshman chemistry is a molecule 
or an entity that catalyzes a reaction, but is unchanged in the process. That's a principle that is hammered into every freshman chemistry student. Now we see that enzymes are actually slightly violating that principle. They're being changed transiently during the process, but they end up in the, in the end in the same way they started. So overall, they're not violating it, but they cheat a bit. We see in this slide then a summary of all the reactions or the steps in the process that you've seen before. And I don't want to go through those again, but I do want to make the point that you notice that the arrows are going both ways. And that means that this reaction and every step in this reaction is reversible. Now, reversibility of a reaction is a very important thing to keep in mind when we're talking about metabolic processes, or for that matter, even non-metabolic processes, but especially for metabolic processes because we have to think that is, what are the conditions that would make something go backwards? You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions, customized to US MLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit Lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.